Hey, Kentucky, this is Mary Jo Perino tonight. Fayette County Schools are helping bridge the digital divide. Lynn Bowden's going to be a running back in Las Vegas and another potential transfer for Coach Cal and the Cats. All that and more is next on Hey, Kentucky. Welcome to Hey, Kentucky with LEX 18 Sports Director Keith Farmer in his Oaks attire today on what should be Oaks Day. I have not worn a tie in like a month and a half and it had to come out and the yeah. pink had to be worn because it is Oaks Day. It is. Although we can't enjoy it till September 4th. Regardless of where that it's not happening, it's still Oaks Day in the state exactly. of Kentucky. All right, let's begin with Fayette County Public Schools, who have announced the launch of several initiatives to help students get through the COVID-19 pandemic. The district announced it would be continuing a daily storytelling initiative virtually with celebrity readers. The district already had Chromebooks for over 35,000 students, but because many kids do not have internet access at home, the school district has now partnered with AT&T and T-Mobile and will be purchasing 2,000 hotspots for children in need and will pay for at least six months of internet service. They expect the total cost to be around $250,000. A call in help desk has also been established for families that need technical assistance. Radically changed the world around us. Our core values have remained constant. Team FCPS has continued to put students first, ensure victory in our newly defined classroom, collaborate build capacity, and hold one another accountable for success. We continue to partner with families and draw on the strength of our community. As far as graduation goes for now, it still looks like it's going to be a virtual event, but the school district is holding on to its reservations at Rupp Arena. Keith, it's not like if graduation doesn't happen, anything else is going to happen at Rupp Arena. Uh, but I think every district is going to try to figure out something as far as graduation. Yeah, we've heard like some drive-in kind of graduation, some virtuals. If it's a small enough school, I don't see why they couldn't do a Zoom kind of deal there. But yeah, for some of these larger schools in Lexington, I'd love to see them just kind of hang on, see if they can do it later on in June or maybe even July before everybody takes off for college or in the military, whatever the case may be. Listen, internet is one of those things that I just know is going to be around. So to see the number of kids that, ha that are without Wi-Fi and reliable Wi-Fi is has been staggering, eye-opening, and I'm so glad they're doing something about it. That's a great idea, and I'm glad they're doing something about it, like you said. Yeah. All right. Now that the virtual spring semesters at colleges brought on by the coronavirus are winding down, many students are left wondering what will college look like in the fall? Many colleges across the Midwest have proposed plans that include students returning to campus in August, contingent on the continued slowing of the spread of COVID-19. With many universities facing a serious cash deficit, the University of Kentucky is facing a $70 million budget shortfall. There have been no raises, furloughing of hundreds of employees, but fall tuition and housing money bring a big influx of cash. So returning to campus for the fall semester and getting back to a reinvented or reimagined normal is UK's focus. They plan to reopen to students in August, but they're still finalizing those plans. The question for students is just as hard. Is it worth risking the extremely high tuition money for a semester that could still be in jeopardy or will they feel safe enough to come back? One research company has predict, predicted a 20% drop in enrollment this fall. Keith, at this point, UK has said that the numbers for their fall semester are looking really good. Yeah, you know, I, I sat there, though, and tried to put myself in this situation, and, and I think it really depends on the person. I mean, if you're coming from a long way away, maybe you don't want to. You want to go to a college that's closer where you can stay at home and go to school or do more online. So I... Uh, it's good to hear that UK is getting good numbers. I just don't know if it's going to happen everywhere. That's that's very true, and it may it may be in state numbers as well. Well, as our world starts reopening with people wearing masks in public, one Lexington mental health counselor is warning this new experience could be anxiety inducing for some. It's been more than a month since the state has been healthy at home, and looming fears of the coronavirus aren't going away totally. But some anxiety could be a positive thing. Keeping in the forefront of your mind helps you stay aware of some of our new rules like social distancing, touching your face, and what you are touching. Being aware of what it is that we're experiencing 
uh, internally and then pushing ourselves just a little bit, you know, to, to get out and be around other people and don't allow that fear to hold us back at the same time. There's a lot that can be uh, gained. There's a lot that we can understand when we hear someone's tone of voice. Keith, I don't know about you, but the, the, the waves of kind of anxiety come and go. Um, I think a lot of people are dealing with trying to figure out what mental health looks like when you're so isolated. Yeah. And, you know, not only that, I'm thinking about like, at least it, it helps you think, like he said, think ahead to when we get to the winter months and the flu starts coming on. I think we're going to remember this and we're going to know how to react around that. And then I'm wondering, are we going to ever shake hands again? Are we ever going to hug those that maybe aren't family members? It's it's something to think about for sure. I, I know I am going to because it's just it's just nature. It's just natural. Yeah. Where have you heard this before? A national news outlet is predicting Kentucky's football record won't be that great. Disrespect. CBS Sports analyst Barrett Sally predicts the Cats will go 6-6 six and six in the regular season, winning just two games in the SEC and barely making a bowl game. Despite all the talent that's returning from last year's team that won seven regular season games and the Belk Bowl with a receiver at quarterback. Sally has Kentucky losing to Florida, South Carolina, Auburn, Missouri, Tennessee, and Georgia says their only SEC wins will be Vandy and Mississippi State. Now, the reason behind this, Sally says, is the loss of Lynn Bowden, and that will be too much for the team to overcome. Kentucky returns a ton of starters on both sides of the ball. Last season was able to redshirt the entire freshman class, and the incoming class might be Kentucky's best ever. Keith, yes, we're going to miss Lynn Bowden, but he wasn't even supposed to be the dude doing all that last year. We were going to be a good team with Terry Wilson. There was a great tweet out today where it said, uh, you know, Kentucky can't win with a wide receiver at quarterback, with Lynn Bowden at quarterback. And then there's another button that says, yeah, Kentucky can't win without Lynn Bowden being there. <laughs> They're going to miss him too bad. I mean, keep disrespecting them because a couple of years ago, it was Benny Snell Jr. lighting that on fire when he saw what their record was supposed to be. Last year, it was Lynn Bowden disrespect us. I'll just put it on Twitter and we'll just go out there and show you we can do it. Somebody's going to step up and take that that onus on them and say, yeah, keep disrespecting this and we're going to show you because this is a good team next year. I really think so. And I think these guys are still thriving on that kind of disrespect. So bring it on. All right. Speaking of Lynn Bowden, Kentucky's loss is the Raiders gain. They selected Lynn with the 80th overall pick in last week's draft. But fans might have been a bit surprised when NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell read off the pick and slated the Kentucky wide receiver as a running back. But that's exactly how the Raiders intend to use him. General Manager Mike Mayock said that Bowden would start at running back, but would ultimately be a multi-purpose player. I think the cool thing about him, Rich, is he becomes a, what John calls a joker, an ability to, to play running back, slot, wide uh we can use him we could line up him up in the wildcat in the red zone so uh we envision lynn bowden doing a variety of jobs for us but primarily he'll be a running back surprise surprise he can do it all and now we know what jersey number he will be wearing he tweeted out he'll be donning 33 in las vegas i don't know if this is a coincidence or not keith but that was also uh my number in high school there you go. Uh, you're going to have to get the jersey for sure. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I, the thing that excites me is the way they're talking about him and the way they want to use him. Sounds like from day one, they want him out there on the field, and that's awesome to hear. Yeah, and that they had been, that he had been high up on their, you know, wish list for a mm -hmm. long time. 